Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our series on deploying and provisioning a network security environment with the Palo Alto Networks SDK. Now, if you're just joining us, I recommend checking out our previous video where we introduced the SDK and walked through some of its basic examples. In today's video, we're going to dive deeper into the heart of the Python SDK, exploring how it utilizes the principles of object-oriented programming, or OOP for short. Object-oriented programming is this paradigm that structures software design around data or objects and the methods that operate on these objects. It's an essential concept in many programming languages, including Python. With the Python SDK, we're dealing with objects that represent various components of the Palo Alto Network's ecosystem. These objects have attributes and methods, which we can interact with to build up our configuration. Throughout this video, we're going to go hands-on with the PanOS Python SDK. We're going to demonstrate how to configure security policies and how to set up our own network interfaces. Our goal for today is to illustrate object-oriented programming principles and how they shape the PanOS Python SDK, and what you can do to leverage this knowledge to manage your Palo Alto networks more efficiently. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started. All right, let's get into the nuts and bolts of how the PanOS Python utilizes object-oriented programming. We briefly touched upon this in our introduction, but let's go just a little bit deeper. In the object-oriented programming paradigm, we design our software around objects and their interactions. Each object is an instance of a class, which defines the set of attributes and methods. You can think of this like building blocks with Legos. Each block or piece is an object that has a specific size and a shape. Those would be the attributes. And we can connect to this object with other blocks in a very specific manner. These would be the methods. In the context of PanOS Python, we're dealing with classes that represent the different components of a Palo Alto Networks ecosystem, such as firewalls, panorama, security policies, network interfaces, address objects, and very much more. Each one of these classes has its own set of attributes and methods. An attribute, again, is a characteristic or a property of that object. For example, a firewall object might have attributes like its IP address, username, password, API token, etc. Methods, on the other hand, these are the functions that belong to the object. They represent actions an object can take or operations that it can perform. In other words, while the attributes tell us what the object knows, the methods tell us what an object does. So in our firewall example, we could have methods to retrieve its configuration or apply changes. These methods interact with the attributes of the firewall, allowing us to manipulate and manage the state of the firewall. Now the SDK provides a comprehensive set of methods that we can use to interact with our objects. We'll be going over many more of them in a later video, but for now, let's just recognize that these methods come with a tremendous value by shortcutting all the complex XML generation and API coordination work. Here's just a list of some of the more common methods that we'll be seeing quite a bit of. The add method. Now this method allows us to add a child object to a parent object. This is especially useful when we're building up a configuration with multiple layers of hierarchy. For example, adding a security rule to a security rule based parent. The create method. Now the create method will push the object to the live device, but it is non-destructive. This means that it combines the object with an existing one on the live device if they have the same name. It's a way of applying changes without completely overriding existing config. On the other hand, the delete method, just like the name suggests, it removes the object from the live device and the configuration tree. This is a destructive method that should be used carefully. The refresh method. Now this is an interesting one because it sets the parameters of your Python object with the parameters from the live device. This is very useful when you want to sync your local object state with the state of the device. 
The update method, this one allows us to push a single parameter to the live device. It's a very targeted way of changing specific attribute changes on an object within the live device config. Now again, these are just some few examples of what the SDK offers. There are many more, each with its own purpose and use case. Understanding these methods and having a firm grasp on that is going to be key to efficiently using this SDK. So we'll be exploring some of these methods again in our next video. So this is the theory behind how PanOS Python uses object-oriented programming. Let's put some of that theory into practice with some hands-on examples. All right, now that we have a good understanding of how PanOS Python uses the principles of object-oriented programming, let's put that knowledge into practice. We're going to start by setting up a security policy on a firewall. This should give you a good sense of how these concepts translate into a practical application. The security rules in the Palo Alto Network's firewalls are fundamental for determining the communication channels between zones, which can be critical when managing network security and traffic. To create a security rule in Python using the PanOS Python SDK, we first need to import the rule base and the security rule from the PanOS policies module. Let's write the imports and then discuss how they operate. Rule base, it's a container for all the rules that you have on your firewall. And security rule allows us to define a new security rule. We first need to create an instance of rule base and then attach it to the firewall before attaching our rules to the rule base. Next, we need to define our security rule. Here, we'll create a rule named allow SSH to allow SSH traffic from any source to any destination within any zone. Now this rule is gonna allow SSH from any source to any destination and set the servicing to application default, which means that applications default ports and application profile are used. The action is allow, which will enable the traffic as per the defined parameters. Now remember, these attributes define what our object, or in this case, what our security rule is and looks like. Now finally, we attach the rule to the rule base. Now what's happening here is more than just adding our security rule to the firewall with simple lines of code. The crucial part is understanding the relationship between the firewall, the rule base, and the rule. And you might be wondering why we're attaching our rule to the rule base object, which was previously added to the firewall object. Well, it all comes down to how these objects interact and communicate with the live firewall device. The firewall object, in essence, is our link to the actual live firewall device. When we attach the rule base to it, we're equipping the rule base with the context it needs to interact with the live device. It's like giving it a map to, with all the instructions on how to follow that map. Next, we attach our rule to the rule base. And by doing so, we give the rule the same context, the knowledge of the firewall it needs to operate on. This way, the rule is all geared up to make the changes on the live device. Well, finally, we use the create method on the rule object to push this new rule to the live device. This method leverages the information provided by its parent, the firewall object, through the rule base to communicate with the live device and to make the necessary changes. This method leverages the information provided by its parent, the, the firewall object, through the rule base. It uses this information to communicate with the live firewall and to make the necessary configuration changes. So there you have it. We just created a new security rule. We've added it to the rule base. We've associated it with the firewall and we've applied the change to the live device. This is the heart of the operations with the PanOS Python SDK. We create objects, we set their attributes, we add them to other objects, and then we use the predefined methods to interact with the live device. Now that we've seen how to work with security policies, let's take a look at another key part of PanOS configuration, which is the network interfaces. Just like our security rule, a network interface in PanOS Python is represented as an object with its own attributes and methods. 
We'll start by creating an Ethernet interface object. This object represents the Ethernet interface 1.1 on a PanOS firewall. Now we've created our Ethernet object called Ethernet underscore interface, and we set its attributes. These attributes include things like the name of the interface, the mode in which it's operating, and the IP address. Again, these attributes define what our object or what our network interface looks like. Now let's add the interface to the firewall. As before, we use the add method on the firewall object for this. By adding our interface to the firewall object, we're giving it the context it needs to interact with the live device, just like we did with the security rule. Finally, we're going to use the create method of the ethernet interface to push this new interface to the live device. There you have it. We've created a new network interface, we've added it to a firewall, and we've applied the change to a live device. This process is very similar to what we did with the security rule, showing again how the principles of object-oriented programming provide a consistent approach to interacting with the PanOS devices using the SDK. Now that we've seen how to work with network interfaces, we'll start wrapping up and discuss what we'll cover in the next video. Whoa, we've covered a lot in this video. We've taken a deep dive into object-oriented programming paradigm. We've seen its implementation with the PanOS Python SDK. We've explored the importance of class objects, discussed their attributes and their various methods. We've looked at how to create and configure both security policies and network interface config, showing how these configurations are represented as objects within the SDK. We've seen how to set the attributes on these objects and how to use their methods to add them to the firewall or panorama and change them to the live device. This object-oriented programming, again, it's the heart of how PanOS Python SDK works. It's providing a consistent and intuitive way to interact with our Palo Alto network devices, allowing us to manage the complex configurations with ease. But we've only just scratched the surface. See, on our next video, we're going to take an even closer look at some of the methods available in the PanOS Python SDK. We'll look at methods for adding, removing, and finding objects, for refreshing data from the live device, for pushing changes to the devices, and many others. These are all going to give us even more tools for managing our configurations. So stay tuned for that. And if you found this video helpful, please give it a like, leave a comment, share it with your dog, and don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss out on the next one. And as always, if you have any questions on the topics you'd like us to cover, just leave it down in the comments below. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you in the next video.